So good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night to everybody from all around the world. We have 200 people and counting. Um, we had more than 800 people register for this webinar from all around the world. We're so excited to host this webinar and invite you here. This webinar has been co-organized with our team at UNICEF. So Radhika and Ana Nieto, if you just want to wave hi to everybody. And also the Aga Khan Foundation. So Sweta Shah, just wave hi to everybody. Um, they have been co-conspirators and thank you so much to Lego Foundation for supporting this webinar. Um, the goal of this webinar is to do a deep dive on uh, support for parenting through two particular mo modalities that Diego will go through in um, a few seconds. But before we start, just a few housekeeping. Um, please, it, please select all panelists and attendees. Let's take one second in the chat box. Please select to all panelists and attendees. I'm still seeing some people introducing themselves in by selecting just all panelists. If you do that, only the panelists can see you, not the attendees. But we want everyone to know who we are. So if you can quickly select all panelists and attendees and write your name, where you're from, what do you do? It would be a great way to just like let us be uh, welcomed uh, here. The second thing is we uh, throughout the webinar, as you're listening to the speaker, to write your questions in the Q&A chat box. If you put them in the regular chat, it's just gonna go and we may miss it. So please put it in the Q&A chat box. You also have the option of voting. So if you see someone else has already asked a question that you have, you can just press like and we can just keep voting for questions that you want answered. Excellent, I'm seeing people do all the panelists and attend. Good job, everybody. Hi, Lindsay from Nairobi, it's amazing. So many people from all around the world. Um, and finally, you can also respond to the Feel free in the chat to share links and resources and examples from your own programs um, and so on and so forth. So um, with that, I would like to my great pleasure to introduce you to the moderator for today's webinar, Diego Adame, who is the Director of Playful Parenting at the Lego Foundation. But I turn it over to you, Diego. I request all panelists to keep yourself on mute so that we avoid background sounds. So if you are not speaking, please kindly mute yourself. Thanks everybody. Over to you, Diego. Thank you very much, Chikufe, and welcome everyone. And thank you to all our panelists. We are very excited of the group of panelists that we have today to share the, the experiences with Care for Child Devel Development and with Reach Up and Learn. They are both uh, parenting packages that have tons of evidence that they have uh, provided positive results for children in, in their childhood, but also throughout life. So we, we thought that it was a really good opportunity to, to talk about parenting in the context of COVID-19, because we know that today more than ever, it has been crucial, the role that parents play. And we all have known that it's always important, but it has never been so evident for everyone uh, uh, globally that the the role that parents have in children's development is fundamental. So what we're going to do today is we're going to give an overview of what uh, Rich, and, uh, Rich Up and Learn is from Dr. Susan Walker, and then we'll have an example of how that is uh, adapted in, uh, in, in Jordan by our colleagues at IRC. And then we will have Dr. Aisha uh, Yusufai, who will give us an overview of care for child development, and we will hear from colleagues from Aga Khan Foundation and UNICEF, how they have adapted the, the program to their context. We, we ask all of you, all of our participants, to provide your questions. We have gone through all of them, and we have tried to design this uh, next 90 minutes based on the question that you sent us. When I looked at them, it was very clear there were some trends. People want to know about adaptations. Uh, adaptations, what happens in humanitarian settings, so we brought uh, a lot of that. But also, what do we learn from that now that we are all living in an emergency situation? So we are making sure that we are covering the adaptations. There's a lot of comments about the importance of uh, the mental well-being of children and, and caregivers. So we also make sure to, to cover that. And also, of course, think about what are new ways of uh, reaching parents with the, with the new reality? So how, how do we reach parents? through technology or when we do not have access to technology. So we'll he hear some inspiring examples today. And I encourage everyone, use the chat box whenever you, you have an idea that you want to share or something that you are doing in your organization. 
And as Yukufe said, when you have a question, go to the Q&A box and put your question there. If you see that someone already asked that, like it because it will, be high, it will go higher up in the list. Unfortunately, we might not have time to answer all of the questions, so make sure that the one you really like, that you literally like it, so it goes up in the list. So with no further ado, I would like to introduce our first speaker, Dr. Susan, Walk, uh, Dr. Susan Walker, who is the head of the Child Development Research Group at the University of West Indies. And she's going to be sharing with us more about Reach Up and Learn and also what they have done to adapt to COVID-19. Thank you very much. Uh, go ahead, Susan. I think you, you have to unmute Susan, sorry. You're still okay. on. Perfect. Okay, thanks, thanks, Diego. Um, I hope everybody can see, see the slides. Um, I'm not able to, oh, here we go, that's better. So um, I'm just, I'm very happy to have this opportunity to talk just a little bit about what ReachUp is and um, how we've made some adaptations for um, the COVID-19 pandemic. So um, we developed ReachUp as because we wanted to increase capacity building for persons to be able to deliver effective parenting programs. So with the support of Grand Challenges Canada, we develop a comprehensive training package, which is really targeted at implementing agencies and governments and NGOs with an aim of them you know, having the capacity to deliver effective parenting and also to facilitate scaling. The program is based on the principles and methods of the Jamaica Home Visiting Intervention, which has a very strong evidence base, both from work in Jamaica and replications in other countries. ReachUp is feasible to implement in low resource settings and can be integrated with other services and adapted for the context. And qualitative work shows that it's valued by parents and delivery agents. So just to go through a few of the key features of the intervention, the intervention was designed to be delivered by non-professionals. And the core of the, um, the intervention is an interactive play session with the mother and the child that seeks to build mother's ability to promote development through playful interactions. There's a structured cur curriculum that uses play and everyday, everyday activities. Susan, to sorry to interrupt mm -hmm. you. Is it possible to make the slides full screen? And we aren't seeing the slides change if you intend them to be changing. I have been changing them. Oh, we don't see that. So would you, sorry, just a technical glitch. You can't have a webinar with that one. So if you can kindly just stop sharing and then try again, then we can, we can have a go at it. Okay. Thank you. And, um, okay. Beautiful. Um, is that full, is that full screen now? Yes, ma'am. Hmm? Okay, good. Um, so as I was saying, um, it's delivered, designed to be delivered by non-professionals, uses an interactive play session. And the curriculum you has, uh, uses play and everyday activities to introduce concepts and language. Um, play sessions use um, toy, homemade toys, songs, games, activities, and picture books um, to do this. And the parents are encouraged to continue activities and trying to integrate them into the daily things that they do with their child. And the methods place a lot of emphasis on being responsive to the child in terms of his or her mood, what she, he, she says, actions, and interests. Emphasis is also placed on mediating the environment for the child by describing and naming and introducing um, of objects and words and activities. There's a lot of emphasis also on praise for the child's achievements 
and, and, and her efforts and for, the, and for the parents' efforts. And the goal is for this set, the sessions to be fun and enjoyable and hopefully help to build both the self-esteem of the child and the parent and also the mother's enjoyment of the sessions. Uh, so ReachUp has been adapted and implemented in 15 countries in Asia, Africa, and Latin America. And the program is, is, was initially des originally designed to be a home visiting program, but has been adapted to small group sessions. Of course, many countries have been implementing reach up or other methods of reaching parents to support parenting. And almost all of these were suspended in response to COVID-19. Uh, so both um, home visiting programs and center based programs where parents came to, to groups. So in response to this, we developed the reach, a reach up parent manual and which in which we selected just some play and language activities from from the larger reach up curriculum, particularly using those that either use no materials or few materials and, and where there were materials we adapted them so that the, they could be use household materials that the parents would likely have in their home. While we designed it as a manual that could be printed and given to parents, we really recognized that this would often not be necessarily the method that people would, would be most appropriate for people to use. And so we also wanted, designed it so that the content could be used for remote contacts with parents, such as through phone calls or text messaging or using internet-based uh, methods, and also on radio or TV. Some quick examples of the use in Mexico, um, they've made printouts from 10 selected, for 10 selected activities from the kit curriculum, which are given to parents. And these, this is then supported by short radio dramas. Uh, and radio dramas have also been developed in Guatemala by Child Fund with the support of the World Bank. Uh, in Ecuador, they're also making printouts from the parent manual and there they're going to be supporting them with scripts, uh, with, with weekly phone calls for which they're developing scripts. And the idea is that each phone call would deal with health screening, including um, mental health, and then have a play activity. And as we'll hear in a, in a little bit, um, the, the IRC have been using it also in, their, uh, in Jordan. So finally, just wanting to emphasize that we also need to learn from this response. The content that is in the parent manual is evidence-based content, but we've never delivered it through these methods before. So it's clearly an opportunity for us to learn how best to do this. So we need to know how the delivery methods work, how do parents engage with them, and how do they like the remote contacts, whether they be calls or text messaging or radio. We also need to understand how we provide support to the facilitators remotely I and mean, how do we maintain their training, mentoring and monitor quality. And very importantly, this information is likely to be, very, to be useful post pandemic because it will increase our understanding of how remote contacts and technology can be used as strategies for scaling. So thanks very much and I'll stop there. Perfect. Thank you very much, Susan. And who hasn't heard about the very famous Jamaica study? And it's really great to hear from you the overview of what that means, of what Reach Up and Learn is. And now to, go, to see it in action, I'm, I'm very happy to have our colleagues from IRC. We have uh, Kathleen Wilton, who's an ECD senior specialist uh, from the technical unit in New York. And we have Ayat Al Akra, from, who's an ECD technical manager in, at IRC Jordan. So they're going to be sharing with us how they have adapted to uh, humanitarian settings, but also how they have responded to COVID-19. So over to you. I'm sorry, you are on mute, Caitlin. 
Thank you so much, Diego. Um, really appreciate that introduction and to Susan for, for her setting up the um, what ReachUp is and, um, and why we have adapted it. Um, I'll, I'll build on um, this as well. Um, but I, uh, my colleague Ayat and I will be co-presenting um, to you um, on our work in the Syria response region and um, highlighting the, um, the work in, in Jordan. Okay. Um, so in across the, uh, the Middle East, we have implemented um, Reach Up and Learn in, um, in Syria, Lebanon, and Jordan. Um, we've uh, integrated Reach Up and Learn into existing um, program sectors within IRC. Um, so we've integrated with child protection um, sectors in um, Syria and Jordan, um, as well as the education sector in Lebanon um, and the, the health community health um, program in Jordan. We'll talk a bit more today specifically on Jordan, as well as the adaptations that we made um, to the curriculum and the materials which um, apply across these um, three countries. So um, I know there's a, been a lot of interest in um, how to adapt, reach up and learn to um, settings of displacement and um, refugee contexts, um, as well as to the context of um, the Middle East specifically. So um, I'll talk through some of the key pieces, um, key parts of our, our adaptation, um, which are many really, um, and continually uh, evolving. Um, so um, our, our adaptation process began in, um, in 2016 um, with Ayat and I in um, Azraq camp in Jordan, together with some of um, one of Susan's colleagues um, from, the, um, from the Reach Up um, team of advisors. Um, and we did some community consultations with, um, with the Syrian refugees in Azraq camp, um, piloted um, many of the, um, the game songs, activities, um, or you know, the games and activities at least, um, and um, looked um, for what um, recycled materials were available um, to create toys out of um, locally available resources, um, and collected local songs from um, from the community there, the, um, the team of child protection outreach workers supported us to collect a whole list of songs that were locally loved and sung um, that we could collect and um, add into the curriculum. And we've added many more over time to make sure that there's a broad, um, a diverse uh, number of songs um, in Arabic um, that, that are loved across the region. Um, we also did some adaptation to um, the training of home visitors um, to train them more on psychosocial support, um, knowing that the population that they would be serving and that they are indeed from um, has faced um, at times trauma, at times um, economic hardship linked to crisis and any number of um, highly challenging situations due to displacement. Um, and so we cover some basic psychoeducation around, um, around stress, um, as well as some uh, techniques to, um, to manage stress, such as simple breathing exercises that are evidence-based, um, as well as um, activities around resource mapping um, that, um, that help home visitors and and in turn caregivers they serve to identify um, social support resources that they already have in their, um, in their circle. We also um, spent a, a lot of um, time and across many, many technical advisors, um, Arabic speaking um, ECD uh, specialists to ensure the translation 
um, into Arabic was um, was colloquial enough to be um, endearing and well loved type of language, um, as well as um, understandable um, across different uh, dialects and accents where where possible. Um, uh, we also added some more content on child protection, on identifying um, abuse or violence against children or caregivers, um, and of course, um, reinforcing the importance of referrals, um, as well as strategies for positive discipline in the home. Um, we also added um, some training to the um, pre-service um, training on disability inclusion um, and created some um, we created booklets about adapting the activities to um, specific uh, disabilities, the, the most common um, six disabilities um, that, our, that our, our home visitors were most likely to um, encounter in the field. Um, and these are um, simple um, adaptations that don't require um, many resources. Um, we, we also created take home materials. That's the image that you see on the screen, um, which is a take home parent calendar um, that um, is mainly being used in, in Syria, um, but more and more across um, our programs through WhatsApp, um, using those images through WhatsApp. Um, we also dubbed training videos from Jamaica, Bangladesh, and Peru into Arabic, and then created um, five of our own um, Arabic language training materials. Um, okay, um, over to Ayat. Um, Thanks a lot, Kathleen. Hi, all. This is Ayat Al Akra, the ECD technical manager for IRC Jordan team. I'm so glad today to have uh, this webinar and to learn more about your ECD programs in other countries. And I would like to take this opportunity to tell you more, more about Reach Up and Learn implement. In late uh, 2016, uh, Reach Up and Learn have been introduced to uh, IRC and uh, some of IRC staff had attended the training uh, reach up and learn training and uh, after finalizing and attending this training we uh, start the piloting uh, for the home visiting program in uh, Azra Kam um, uh, under umbrella of child protection uh, program. So uh, on the first stage uh, we were uh, starting the home visiting program with the foster and mentor families uh, who have uh, children under three years and the impressive thing that the, the most or all of the home visitors volunteers uh, were recruited, trained and uh, start conducting the, the home visit or start the piloted uh, process where from the same community uh, from the uh, Azra refugee camp which support us in uh, building uh, a trust with the uh, with the family and also uh, helping us in expanding the uh, uh, program in two more villages uh, inside the camp uh, with the capacity of uh, 20 home visitors, three supervisors um, and also uh, this give us, uh, uh, us the chance to um, let the home visitors supporting us in collecting uh, some of the uh, local and pop popular songs which are already included in the uh, Reach Up and Learn curricula. And it was like my colleague mentioned before, uh, um, a part of adaptation process for the Reach Up and frequently done on a weekly basis. And this is like a briefing about the implementation in Azra Kam. Uh, now we will move to another um, implementation modality. Um, the, in this slide, we will uh, talk about the implementation uh, of the Reach Up and Learn under umbrella of the community health uh, team. And 
uh, team uh, in the camp with the Syrian refugees, IRC decided to expand and move, off, move on to another areas. And, um, and, uh, and we already uh, chose uh, Mafra city, uh, Mafra city um, where we have uh, Syrian refugees and Jordan citizens there. So we take this uh, chance to work with uh, both uh, of the caregivers or both groups of the caregiver that we already have it there. Uh, basically, the first step were uh, recruiting the um, uh, recruiting and training the Syrian and Jordanian home visitors, uh, and all of the home visitors, as I mentioned before, are operating under umbrella of uh, health programs. Um, so uh, this um, privilege uh, give us like a chance to add a community health messages for this uh, visit or for the reach up and learn visit. So actually the visit is uh, divided for two things. The first thing, uh, implementing reach up and learn activities with the caregivers. And the second thing is um, uh, spread, spread the uh, community health messages among the caregivers in, uh, in Mafra uh, city. Um, so, um, the, 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 in this modality, the, um, the home visit uh, were done like in bi-weekly basis, and here is the videos, uh, was filmed um, under supervision of IRC, uh, and in these videos, we, it will show um, like brief about the, uh, how the visit uh, looks like. قراراتهم وبتفتح عقلهم حتى ماريا احيانا لما تمسك تكيف تقول لي ماما عملي لي نشاط هي صارت تنطب معي النشاط لما جهزوا هي تجهزوا معي حظيته كله تحكي لي احمر اصفر فانا لقيت الاستفاده اول شيء من عائلتي كعائله فكثير انا استفدت بعلاقتي بيني وبين بنتي Um, I was just, uh, we're um, running out of time a little bit, so I'll just go really quickly. Uh, I wanted to show you some of the print material adaptation for which we worked with um, Jordanian artists um, to set the simple narrative stories in the context that would be familiar and relatable to young children um, in, in Jordan. Um, and they've, they've proved effective in Syria and um, Lebanon too. Okay, Diego's on, that means our time is basically up. So um, we if wanted you know, to know- If you want to share a bit of the COVID response so that- uh, Yeah, we'll also share this deck um, so you can look at what we didn't get through. Aya, can you do um, a, the, a quick overview of the COVID response? Yeah, sure. Actually, in this slide, we will talk about the COVID-19 response done by IRC. And as you see at the first uh, part, uh, we have a messaging, a message was uh, done by IRC staff to be sent for the caregivers uh, via WhatsApp. 
So the first group of the awareness messages is divided for like in three uh, main uh, parts of the messages. We have like well-being um, uh, messages and we have early childhood development messages and also we have uh, how to protect you and yourself from the coronavirus. So these messages were sending for the, um, uh, were sending for the um, uh, caregivers who has a children under eight years. Um, and um, it was um, uh, shared uh, via like a uh, text message and audio message at the same time. Uh, also, we add um, some supportive content or materials from Ahlan Simsim. So we shared the text message with audio message and sometimes uh, shared like uh, pictures or uh, videos to be like a supportive materials for the caregivers and to implement it with their children. For the second thing, the activity-based messages uh, actually this component is still in, in designing process, but the idea of this component is to provide like an um, activities uh, for the caregivers who have children under six years uh, to be sent also uh, via WhatsApp. For the second part, we have phone call support or scripts. Um, uh, the first thing that we uh, decide uh, since that we have COVID-19 and we couldn't implement the home visiting program, with the families, so we, we decide to uh, develop a new scripts uh, or script from the original uh, reach up and learn material that they already trained the uh, home visitors about it. And we start um, um, register a family um, uh, to, to work closely with the home visitors um, about the, um, uh, how to conduct these activities or reach up and learn activities um, with their uh, children uh, in home. So once we decide to create this script, uh, we are uh, focusing actually in, 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 the, uh, in one um, activity per uh, visit. And uh, we add uh, one song also, we add uh, community health messages for the caregivers to help and support them during this situation. Um, also, uh, this uh, phone call was um, uh, developed to be like um, 30 uh, minutes per, um, per call. Uh, and um, for, the, for the, um, the things that we're already focusing on uh, about this uh, call, we, um, we try to uh, involve all of the activities which has like an, uh, which requires no items or like a very simple items. For example, we um, advise family to use like an water cups instead of the uh, cubes if they don't have the cubes in, around them. Also, we divide, uh, we, add, um, we encourage uh, the families to um, practice the language activities with their uh, children. Uh, and also we adding the safety and security part for them because as you know, all of us yani, uh, facing the COVID-19 situation and we, um, we need to make sure that all of the children and caregivers are safe while they conduct like language activities while they're walking around uh, or out of the uh, a home. Uh, also regarding to the training session, all of the training session was conducted uh, online uh, via WebEx um, application. Uh, and uh, in, we are focusing on the three main parts uh, during the online training for the home visitors and the officers or supervisors. Uh, we're focusing on the um, activity itself and how you will uh, brief these activities uh, for the caregivers and let them follow the steps uh, to implement the activities with children. Also focusing on the tips for the uh, home visitors about how they will conduct this uh, call remotely and to, be, uh, to make sure of the quality of this uh, call. Uh, also we focusing on the well-being for the home visitors themselves and the caregivers. So we provide them with some tips to, uh, to make sure that all of them uh, are comfortable and um, uh, have like in a very um, um, good situation during this um, uh, time. Um, so the idea of the um, uh, phone calls and online training was uh, came from um, another component in IRC. We have another um, uh, component um, it's called um, 
parenting uh, skill sessions. So we develop uh, a content for the uh, facilitators to conduct activities remotely with the caregivers who had children under eight years. So it, it was like in seven scripts with a seven calls. The duration of the calls is 20 minutes. So after we got a high impact and it was very uh, successful, we decide to uh, create the uh, script for the reach up and learn and to implement these activities remotely via phone call. So thanks a lot and um, I will stop here. Thank you. Thank you so much Ayat and Kathleen. Uh, thank you for the presentation and for making it so tangible so that we can know more what it looks like and I wonder if you can share and uh, we have had some questions about presentations. We'll make sure to share presentations and this webinar is being recorded, so we'll also share the recording. But maybe if you can share in the chat box uh, this link so people can have access to them because I, I see many people are asking about that. And yeah, so thank you for that. We start seeing some of the adaptations that are happening for COVID-19 and the use of technology. So we'll keep, we'll keep the hearing from other colleagues. And now we will move to talk about Care for Child Development, which is a package that was uh, developed by WHO and UNICEF around 30 years ago, and as well has a lot of evidence uh, of positive impact. And there's no one better to talk about the evidence of uh, care for child development than Dr. Aisha Yusuf, uh, Yusuf Sai from the uh, public, skill, uh, public Health School at Harvard University. So thank you very much, Aisha, for being with us today. Thank you, everybody. And um, I'd like to just thank Ekdan, the Lego Foundation, the Aga Khan Foundation and UNICEF um, for hosting this webinar. I'll dive right in. Um, so Care for Child Development is a collaborative package created with the World Health Organization and UNICEF. It addresses in the space of a number of threats to child development, which include malnutrition, health threats, as well as the family environment. Um, it specifically focuses on two of these threats. One is inadequate stimulation. So we know that early stimulation or playful interaction are important to help children um, learn new things, to solve problems, to make friends, and to really promote their learning language and social and motor skills. We know it's particularly important to get caregivers, both mothers and fathers and other caregivers, to support their children in these playful interactions. And we particularly know that while we want to promote stimulation engagement with all caregivers, it's a little lower for men or fathers than it is for mothers around the world. The other area that Care for Child Development addresses is enhancement of responsive caregiving skills. Now we know that responsive caregiving skills is really the ability of the caregiver, the mother, the father, or other important caregiver in the child's life to really understand their child's communication efforts and needs and being able to respond to those needs in order to provide them with a secure relationship, to provide them with appropriate care for feeding, health, to protect them from harm, and really also to promote their learning and language skills. So we know from this very brief graph at the bottom of the slide here, that families who have more responsive caregiving skills, um, their children have, for example, better vocabulary or word knowledge, which is shown in the red bar, compared with mothers or caregivers that have lower responsive behaviors. So it's important that in the playful interactions that we're also really attending to responsive caregiving capacity. So Care for Child Development does this by being a toolkit or a package that provides evidence-based training for two core skills for frontline workers. The first core skill is the ability of the frontline worker to promote developmentally appropriate play and communication activities. And the second core skill is using that play and communication context to promote responsive caregiving skills in caregivers. So it's always designed as a package to be integrated with other interventions, whether that's parenting support, mental health or nutrition. 
and it's always been intended to be delivered integrated within existing services and programs. So in other words, care for child development as a toolkit will always need to be tailored and adapted to a specific context and program. And examples of this have included integration into sick child visits in Turkey, primary health care services in Mozambique, community health worker program in Pakistan. It's been tailored to really target fathers in the Latin America and Caribbean region. And in Malawi, there is a great example where it's been adapted for children with um, visual impairments and disabilities. So how it works is a basic um, guide around different play and communication activities across the first two years of life. And by taking a specific example, for example, stacking blocks with your young child or stacking cups, the, the frontline worker, whether that's a home visitor or a nurse or a community health worker, will explain the activity to the mother or father. She may demonstrate the activity and show the caregiver how to engage playfully with their child, but then she'll give the caregiver the opportunity to try that with their own child to observe what their own child can do and to provide a few prompts to help them respond to their child's needs during that activity. Maybe talking to their child, helping their child in the activity, praising their child and encouraging the activity to be more complicated as they learn their skills. And this ends with a discussion about what they feel their child learned during the activity, as well as praise and encouragement to continue. In the short term, by doing this, we expect to see improvements in the number of learning opportunities young children have and the increased engagement of caregivers in play and communication. But over time, as these behaviors get taken up in families, we would expect to see an improvement in the quality of the interaction and responsive care, and thereby an improvement in development skills of young children. So we know over the experiences around the world that it's important to have a catalog of play and communication activities that are evidence-based. We know that we need to keep boosting through refresher trainings, the skills of the frontline workers to be able to coach families about the playful interactions and responsive care. And we know it's important to integrate supervisory practice around this package. In terms of opportunities, particularly with the COVID-19 pandemic, I think it's a great opportunity as we've just seen in the Reach Up example to leverage technology and social media platforms to be able to bring together training resources for frontline workers, but also importantly to create new linkages to empower families and community groups, as well as partnerships across sectors to support the promotion of these skills in frontline workers. And it will be great to see this in action in the examples ahead. Thank you. Thank you very much, Aisha, for that overview. I think it's very useful to get started uh, thinking about uh, this package and a great introduction to the next presentation who will be from our colleagues from UNICEF, uh, Latin America and the Caribbean Regional Office. We have Garen Lumpkin, who is an independent consultant on early childhood and childhood disabilities. And also we are joined by Karen Panameño, who's a health, nutrition and emergencies officer at UNICEF El Salvador. And they're going to share how they have adapted it to another uh, pandemic, the, the Zika uh, emergency a few years ago, but also what they're doing around COVID-19. So please uh, go ahead. Uh, thank you very much for being with us. Hey, good morning and greetings to all. It's a real pleasure to be here with you today. Uh, for my presentation today, I will be provi providing you with a brief overview of our UNICEF involvement with PAHO for the implementation of the Care for Child Development Framework within the context of the lax Zika response. In 2012, the UNICEF Regional Office in PAHO expressed interest to utilize CCD. The first step was to organize a regional CCD basic training workshop followed by a technical review process to assess the feasibility of CCD use in the region and to identify required adaptations. 19 ECD experts from the region and UNICEF staff with PAHO 
were included from Spanish, English, and Portuguese speaking countries from all key ECD sectors. Recommendations were made <clears throat> for the first modification process. As indicated in the slide, the CCD rollout has been an ongoing uh, construction process, including two stages of adaptations, piloting modified EC CCD versions, rollout in regional countries, and multi-country capacity building for sustainability and scaling up. Next slide. The first adaptation process was based on the ECD expert review, included the following recommendations to increase focus on child rights, expand CCD use to include other services and settings beyond just health, expand focus to include fathers and other family members, include caregiver orientation related to young children with disabilities, emphasize quality of all caregiver child interactions, not just for early stimulation activities focusing on therapy and to improve all environments for early learning. Based on the completion of the English and Spanish LAC versions of CCD, the country rollout process started. In 2017, the link with the Zika response started. As indicated in the map, UNICEF's country's involvement for implementing this care and support component included 10 countries with eight utilizing or starting to use CCD. This effort included actions in Central and South America and then the Caribbean. At the start of our main work on care and support, according to uh, PAHO and WHO data, the indications were they covered what was the expansion of the Zika um, transmission worldwide and in the region. Next slide. The question, why CCD? CCD was identified as a critical component of CNS, care and support, since as presented by Asia, it offers an interventional toolkit that provides evidence-based training for two core skills, combined with other actions for preparing multi-sector service providers to support family orientation to promote child development through early intervention strategies, strengthen response and nurturing caregiving for families with young children with disabilities, assist families to address potential impacts, those listed in this slide, and to promote inclusion and child rights. Based on the early stages of the seeker response in Brazil and other countries, combined with information produced by the CDC, WHO, UNICEF, and other technical agencies, it was clear that the impact of the Zika virus on affected children and their families was significant, requiring multi-sector ongoing support for the child and the family beyond the often provision of a traditional or medical model of rehabilitation. In this slide, I have tried to summarize in three impact groupings of some of the conditions and situations faced by young children affected by the Zika virus and their families, and all, all impacting on a child's development and the capacity and responsiveness of caregivers for pro providing nurturing care and early intervention. Finally, we found that the country level CCD rollout was extremely important to strengthen country responses in terms of the, the CICA to assist caregivers and other family members. Next slide. After the initial stage of the seeker response, the second moment of adaptations was undertaken based on emerging country responses and experiences. The additional modifications included preparations of a CCD training technical seminar on child care and family support, introduction of CCD clinical field practices as part of the training process, and early intervention rehab services as part of CCD rollout course, providing new experiences and promoting change of focus for all working with young children, especially those with disability. Preparation of orientation materials for caregivers on parenting and early intervention. And finally, the design of a CCD rollout strategy and guide focusing on capacity building. Next slide. As part of the SECA response work, we prepared an essential component framework for child care and family support to assist our country support process to promote multi-sector interventions focused on children affected by the Zika virus 
and other developmental disabilities. Due to the multiple conditions faced by families and, and children and their children, a systems approach of services was and continues to be required across the life course. As indicated in this slide, we found that uh, multiple entry points exist for CCD use as part of care and support interventions considering the life course stages, actors and services considered to be most influential at each stage, and main intervention actions for care and support. Next slide. Due to time limitations, I will skip this slide since you will have this information in the PowerPoint and Karen will mention many of these in her presentation. Next slide. Finally, important steps were made in three of the Zika response countries to embed CCD and existing services, strengthening CCD linkages with the increasingly accepted nurturing care framework and building on existing global evidence. This has been an important effort before the Zika response, during the emergency situation, and we project also this will be very important after the COVID uh, pandemic. Uh, thank you very much for this opportunity, and now I'll pass to Karen. Hi, everybody. Care for Child Development in the Emergency Context, the experience in El Salvador. Um, next, please. CCD is based on evidence and has been endorsed by the Lancet and Nutrient Care Framework and is a cost-effective intervention. Additionally, uh, as Garen mentioned, the package has been adapted and contextualized for the specific needs for Latin America. This is the reason why UNICEF El Salvador decided to present the package to the government as a key intervention in the context of the Zika response to provide support to young children affected by the congenital Zika syndrome and other developmental disabilities and to support an involved family. Next, please. Uh, the relevance to uh, the Zika response, CCD is implementable since pregnancy and in hospital, particularly just after delivery. Zika emergency showcase that caregivers were receiving the first message about the disability of their children in the hospital is a very tall and unsensitive manner. Some example could be your child is normal and you just have to adapt or your child uh, was born bad and you will live and the child will live some month. Implementing CCD in the context was really relevant to you as health service, particularly when delivering the first message. And also since CCD trainer were done an intersectoral manner, articulation and referral mechanisms of services for children with disability were strengthened. Next. El Salvador is a country located in Central America with the only Pacific Ocean and most of the country is on a fertile volcanic plateau. It is the smallest country in Central America and none of the land of El Salvador has frequent earthquake volcanic activities, so the emergencies are part of our preparedness and response plan for our own UNICEF country office. I would like to mention that the initial work was done in 17 municipalities that were extended over time, and as a result of negotiation with the main government counterparts, a national, a national scope was achieved. Next. CCD implementation timeline. Uh, we start CCD training process begin uh, at the country internal training for UNICEF to people and later on we train for Ministry of Health and Ministry of Education uh, staff and then we finish with a course with ECD for, prof uh, for ECD professional more than seven, 700 Later in 2018, more than a thousand of health education and now academia professional were trained. 
implemented with family reach through uh, Ministry of Education Service. And we designed some materials, guides and tools to contextualize and integrate the CCD approach existing. And we also negotiate with the government for the adoption of CCD. In, to, uh, in 2019, well, we, we uh, train more professional in health, education, rehabilitation, protection, academia, NGOs, and support family networks. Uh, implemented with family through different sector, sectoral uh, train in CCD. Health providers, uh, health promoters, uh, nurses, and uh, some doctors who, when they made the home visit, uh, not only focus on carry out the health check, but also took time uh, to guide the families. The health promoters now take more time during the visits and make a specific recommendation when interacting with families and their children. Next. The potential of CCD in El Salvador. The CCD approach is compa compatible and can integrate it into the different programs to um, provide a guide to caregivers appropriate for the age of the children, particularly during the first thousand days, and thus stimulate their physical, cognitive, linguistic, and so social emotional development through play and communication is compatible with different programs that we're running. Its focus include in care of health education, rehabilitation in academia, cross-sectoral action to ensure family receive guidance on CCD, and the orientation to main caregivers in the service uh, of different programs is implemented at the country level. Nowadays is promoted by the office of the first lady, I mean the office the, of the president of El Salvador. Next. In results, numbers are uh, almost 5,000, uh, 77 children with congenital Zika syndrome for significant support for their family gain process. Almost 6,000 families were reached as there is almost uh, 15 health providers from Ministry of Health and more than 400 education frontline workers were trained to involve many own visits in the field. Uh, seven involved in trainings. This allows for sustainability of the process as well as the committed to curricular changes at university career with field work and key institution. 78 professionals from the child protection sector who were involved in the third year are accepted the challenge of interacting in their regular training process at the national level. 87 professional in the field with maternal waiting houses that support to reduce maternal and neonatal mortality, as well as contributing to CCD while pregnant women live in the maternal home. And finally, 57 disability referral office who are part of the Ministry of Education and who support rehabilitation service were trained to. Next. Uh, the system is strengthening integrated a care model through national consolation with the participation of health, education, protection, rehabilitation, and academy, as well as UNICEF staff team. Communication strategy and community participation with key message and materials to support communication to the develop, development and change of behavior how to do it from families as key is, is, is a key in this process. A step-by-step step guide, I mean the guidelines for family consilium providers, was our star product with Zika emergency intervention. Guidelines for health addiction protection and rehabilitation, easy to understand and adapt, uh, adapted to the population. 
training manuals, uh, interactive and easy to use. And finally, mapping of service for people with disability, including children. Uh, we should not work with disability if an additional support service that family requires are not known at the territorial level. Next, please. I'm sorry, Karen, to interrupt. Uh, we're, we're over time, so if you can prioritize uh, what you want to say just as, as closing. Okay. Thank you. Ima imagine that reflect the process of the result for family concealing uh, to meeting with the decision maker and approve CCD training, implementation of multi-sectoral training, coordination, and support uh, network strengthening. Next, please. Some lesson learned, uh, SICA and CCD offer an opportunity to position the children with disability within the ECD agenda and strengthening, learn from the process and process initiated by other countries and expand CCD implementation progressively in El Salvador, involves those responsible for management and decision making from the beginning of the implementation process so that the negotiation have the expected effect. All early childhood service must be comprehensive, integrated, and articulated at all level basis on the life cycle family based approach. Next, please. Recommendation for the next step follow up the professional in charge and continue the implementation of CCD. Engage family, caregivers, and key allies that share their experience with other family and demand service and information. NGOs and associations that work with children with disability need support with training process in CCD, as well as support process direct of their parents and relatives as psychological support. Multi-sectoral articulation, a single sector cannot address the need for your children and their families successfully in a sustainable manner. Next, please. CCD in other emergencies where we were uh, in May, uh, two tropical storms, Amanda and Cristobal, more than 200 shelter, uh, shelter more than uh, 1,200 sheltered family, around 30,000 affected family. Uh, as you can see in the photo, uh, uh, there is a, a child caregiver connection and interaction, and we use uh, the social media to make Facebook Live about breastfeeding, nutrition at home, and CCD routine at home in the context of emergency. Next, please. Thank well, you. thank you very much, Karen. Thank and you. Karen. And I know that Adriana has shared the link to the video on the chat. So she shared a couple of videos of uh, CCD in practice in Latin America so that people can look at them afterwards. We're just... Uh, okay, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, both of you. And, and yeah, we want to make sure that we have time for Q&A after the next presentation. So... Uh, I know that many people had many questions about uh, programs for children with disabilities, and that was uh, a big focus of this presentation. And you have seen that also Adriana is sharing some resources in the chat. And now I'm going to hand over to our colleagues from Aga Khan Foundation. We have Mohamed uh, Aizuki, who is an ECD project coordinator, and Ferial uh, Hamoud, who is an MNHCR officer. Uh, at Aga Khan Foundation, and they're going to share with us how they have adapted CCD in Syria. So thank you very much, and I give it for you to keep going. And I think you are on mute because we cannot hear anything yet. Hello, everybody. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, so uh, today I'm going to to talk about uh, two experiences with uh, AKF Syria, uh, me and my colleague Friel, on uh, fir the first one on CCD uh, adaptation and integration with uh, health services, and the other one is on uh, an ECD project that was adapted to uh, respond to COVID uh, um, pandemic. So uh, AKF has been working on integrating CCD in primary health centers since uh, 2017. We started as a pilot uh, with uh, uh, 25 centers in four governorates, and we trained more than 20, 150 health workers and reached uh, 20,000 children during this period. The project focused on introducing CCD to health uh, system 
in Syria. And the adaptation uh, was, was done in coordination with the health system as we uh, developed 15 schedule, scheduled visits from zero to five, depending on the Ministry of Health regular child well-being program and based on the six vis visits from CCD, like the zero to two, and the CDC guidelines on milestone cards. Um, we have also added another component related to the administrative work uh, inside the health facility. So we didn't uh, uh, like limited our work to the technical part of it. So we added this uh, administrative part also. So we activated the role of reception in uh, organizing the child flow within the center, depending on the child status. For example, the sick child visit, health, uh, healthy child visit, if it's a regular checkup or it's a vaccination visit. Uh, uh, so, uh, like the reception can know like uh, how to uh, lead the uh, the children to go to like each uh, step in, into the health facility. We also developed a criteria to measure to what extent the health, the health facility is child friendly, and uh, we are working now on, with the ministry to adopt this criteria. Uh, it's just worth to mention that uh, in 2019, the Minister of Health had an initiative to improve uh, the quality of services in health facilities. So they did an assessment to the services in all the primary health centers in Syria. And the 25 centers that uh, was uh, under this project achieved the top ranking, including the first uh, place of uh, Rio. Uh, so the work on integrating ECD into health services uh, can be divided into like five main uh, elements. The, the first one uh, was the advocacy at the national level, which like this step alone took, uh, took us more like one year, uh, as we were working on all uh, levels, starting from the ministry level, and then we went to the district, uh, health district, uh, the district level, and then to the health center management level. The second uh, element, uh, like after we get all the approvals and uh, papers needed to do the job, we started the capacity building, which, uh, as I mentioned, was uh, divided into two uh, mainstreams, the technical training and then the administrative training also. So uh, can uh, health workers can organize their work inside uh, the center. The third element is the implementation itself, where, like, where workers practiced uh, how to do the assessment and how to provide the counseling services, uh, what are the tips to do these uh, things. The fourth element is the parents' involvement through different type, types of activities uh, and sessions. These sessions were designed according to the health center capacity. Uh, for example, if it was a big uh, center, uh, the sessions were done inside the center, or if it's a very small center, the, the um, the activities or the sessions were done uh, outside. Uh, also, we like we did like uh, reg uh, home visits, distribution of brochures, uh, due, like as as uh, parents involvement. The um, the last element is the child friendly corner, which is again designed according to the center capacity. Uh, if there is a like, it's, it could be either a separate room or a corner in the child health room uh, that AKF like provides all the like materials, to, uh, stories and toys. So the, uh, the uh, parents and their children, they can spend uh, like, uh, quality time and productive time uh, to learn and enjoy during the, their waiting for, for, the, for the services. Uh, like this is in like in general the the five uh, elements or components of the project. I will uh, hand it over to my colleague Fariel, who will go in uh, details of uh, talking about all these steps. Okay, thank you, Brad, and uh, good morning and good evening, everyone. I'm glad to have this opportunity. Uh, so I'll start with the advocacy at the national level and the first lesson learned is that the introduction to the Minister of Health is really important 
based on the updated studies, the science terms of ECD uh, brain development, as well as using the WHO health definition as it's a uh, complete state of uh, physical and mental and social well-being. So it's a very important point to enter the ECD into existing uh, health uh, services. And we also focused with the national level about the role of health system as a uh, unique opportunity to which have the access to zero to five children. And also, as Dr. Aisha mentioned, uh, the CCD depend on building on existing services. It's not a new services. It just reorganize what you are uh, doing. So next, Mohammed. The capacity building of health workers, the first lesson learned is we have to train all child health workers inside the health facility, whether they will be responsible to do the counseling or do this project or not, because sometimes they can help each other when the health center is crowded. And another point is that all the child health worker needs to be aware about the importance of ECD and this project. The second very important point is that we did not as AKF train directly the nurses. We depend on trainers uh, who are the child health officer in the Ministry of Health. And this was very helpful because nurses become more committed as their direct manager uh, trained them. In addition, trainers uh, were training in addition to supervising the implementation on ground. Uh, and the third lesson learned is that five days training contained different training methods, but one of the most important one is that the role play, it was very effective way uh, to acquire the skill of uh, communication and conversation. And the last one is that uh, five days training was definitely not enough. So continuous on-job training, supervision visits was very essential. Next. The third element uh, is the uh, service itself. Uh, the child development assessment and counseling. The first one is to introduce what is the objective of this uh, services because sometimes some families at the beginning started to feel scared. Does my child have anything wrong? So it's important to uh, to explain the objective. And second, nurses considered on look and listen. Uh, look, for example, if you see the child uh, walking. Uh, to enter the room, you don't have to ask, does your child um, walk? Uh, for example, at the age of one year and a half, so you just have to put the check. And listen, as Dr. Aisha mentioned, we have to uh, listen to the families. How do you spend your day with your child and build on what they said, praise, and then give the counseling. And the most important one is we have, after one year of implementation, some health facilities started to record a delay cases and then the uh, the question raised about where do we uh, could refer these cases and who can deal with them so we updated the uh, referral system in cooperation with the Minister of Health and the referral system started from the physician or pediatric inside the health facility and then step by step reaching to a specialized center. Uh, also, as Dr. Aisha mentioned, the uh, sharing the catalog or the cards is very important. Messages need to be very short, very clear, simple, and including photos, which may give examples for families for stimulation activities. And also another point is that sometimes the, when the health facility is too crowded during the vaccination days or maybe vaccination campaigns, polio vaccination campaigns, for example, in Syria, uh, in crisis. So you have to give and define or define a visit dates out of these uh, vaccination days to hold the conversation. Next. The four elements, as Mohammed mentioned, that the, um, the community intervention varied according to the capacity of health facility. But the most uh, common one is that health worker found so that it's important to hold session for families uh, and, um, and then nominate two to three parents to be at a lead parents to continue the sessions for other groups. They found also that there is no fixed model for the uh, sessions because sometimes it, you, we have to do an introduction session to um, our orientation session to introduce the topics and then parents can uh, choose the, um, the topics, the time, uh, according to their need. In some health, uh, health facilities, if there are and community health volunteers in the near area, they can do also an interactive uh, activities with children. 
And the final element uh, is the stimulation activities corners, which uh, established after one year of starting the project. And as Mohammed mentioned, it was very important to be near the waiting area to invest the time of waiting for families, for children to play and for uh, caregivers to be uh, talk with nurses. Uh, and also to provide example of how they could make some uh, materials from local resources and health workers said that they discover some uh, talents uh, like singing, drawing and etc. And uh, finally, an evaluation was conducted in 2019 after four years of implementation of the project uh, through interviewing some supervisors, trainers, uh, and other health workers, and I'll mention some uh, numbers. Um, for example, uh, 65 of the health workers mentioned that uh, there was an improvement in organizing and the flow of services inside the health facility, while 44 persons said that the improvement was in providing the integrated package of health services inside the health facility in a very smooth, systemic, and organized way. And also 65 uh, health workers said that they uh, have an improvement in their knowledge and their attitudes, skills and practices according to the provision of health uh, services and especially in, de in detecting delay cases. While 40% of health uh, staff said that they built good relation with family, they said we are now more closer to family. Uh, and also 95 said that uh, we have many success stories, we have very good positive response from uh, parents. So for example, 80% said that there's an increased, increased level of uh, client confidence, which is uh, reflected directly to the uh, percentage who visit the facility. And of course, uh, at the end, there are uh, many challenges, but I want to mention one is that in some health facilities, uh, we have a shortage on the number of health workers uh, who are already responsible for many tasks like vaccination, growth monitoring, health, the, the pediatric, and also ECD counseling. So sometimes it's hard to have the time with family to do all these uh, tasks. Thank you. And now we will move to Mohammed to complete. And I'll share with you in the chat the uh, link, the drive link. Google Drive, sorry, uh, who contain uh, Arabic material and some of them is translated to English. Thank you. Thank you, Fariel. So I just want to add uh, one point that like the project idea was were, uh, were adopted by the Ministry of uh, Health and uh, they were planning to expand uh, in cooperation with AKF and WHO, but like during this, uh, like the plan was postponed uh, because of uh, COVID. So the second example that uh, we are going to talk about is uh, the ECD project that uh, started uh, this year in, uh, in partnership with uh, UNICEF Syria. Uh, during COVID, we have redesigned some of the project activities to respond to the uh, new situation, like the uh, quarantine and the social distancing. Uh, so, for for instance, we transfer the face-to-face -face training uh, and make uh, like and make it a, a blended learning type, where we developed online course content and changed the delivery method. Uh, also, in coordination with the uh, Equity and Global team, we developed tips for parents and caregivers on how to take care of uh, their children during the quarantine and how they, um, what are the messages that they need to give to uh, their children, uh, like on COVID and as uh, psychosocial support. Also, we, we developed homemade activities videos uh, by like AKF facilitators, uh, so like uh, parents can use their time during the um, staying with, uh, with home, uh, at home with their children effectively um, beside the distribution of brochures and SMS uh, messages that includes key key tips on uh, on ECD that can be useful uh, during and after the quarantine. I don't know uh, Diego if there is a time we can show the video. It's a two minutes video. Unfortunately, we we don't. Uh, we are now out of time for this presentation, uh, but the same, if you can share in the chat so that people can, can watch it on their own. Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mohamed uh, Faya, uh, for the presentation and sharing uh, some of those adaptations and the results that you, that you have that are very, very impressive. Uh, now we're going to move to the Q&A session. Thank you so much for uh, sending so many questions. I think we got 
over 60 questions and we have tried, uh, our panelists have been answering them in the, in the Q&A box, but now we'll try to ask some of the questions uh, to all of the panelists or some will be specific. And the very first one to start uh, that we received from Osa Olson, which is how to know which one of these and, and of this uh, and other great programs to choose. So probably that's a question for organizations that are implementing. How do you choose which uh, parenting program you you are going to to use in your context? I don't know if uh, one of our or a couple of our panelists want to respond. Just remember to keep it brief. Uh, so that we have a, a chance to ask more questions. I wonder if uh, IRC, uh, UNICEF, or AKF, anyone wants to answer that question, how you chose the program that you implemented? Garand? No, I, I, based on, on past experiences and also understanding, having worked in the region as education advisor, one of the, I think, the first uh, steps, as, as Karen was explaining, is to see what's going on in the country, to build upon what exists. So I think that's the first step. And then to begin to see which model really responds best to, to the context, the characteristics. Um, and so I think the first step is always, and as was, Asia was saying, is how, how do we embed, how do we build upon what exists in the country? And with that first step, I think then you begin to see what characteristics are, are available in the, in the focus. Like, for example, we are now doing a lot more on the area of disabilities and, and at-risk children. So, but first of all, is always to see what to build upon in the country. Right, thank you, Darren. I don't know if other panelists wants to complement or we move to the next question. Diego, it would be great to hear from either Dr. Walker or Dr. Yusufzai as well on this question since they've seen so many um, iterations of this implemented in different contexts. Um, maybe I'll start and then Susan can, can add. I think first of all, it's important to highlight that there are common ingredients across all of these packages that are evidence-based. So care for child development was a response to trying to raise attention about um, promoting early stimulation and responsive care, primarily in initial stages of its development in the health sector. And it took from the important evidence and learning from the Jamaica study and from the early work in Jamaica um, to really tease out what were the two core skills that is essential for frontline workers to have in order to promote these areas within families. And that was the variety of stimulation, playful interactions and responsive care. The, the key difference I have to highlight here is that care for child development is a toolkit. It's not a structured curriculum. So you would have to tailor it to your program um in in determining for example how many activities and that requires a lot of technical work and support um, in order to build that to whether you want to build it into your community health worker service or an education service or for children with disabilities um thank you aisha susan yes i mean i think aisha makes the point that aisha makes is correct that there's a lot of commonalities because there are key things that we know that work for families and children. So both both programs do address address those. I think that I, I think also she was pointing out the kind of maybe the big dif the biggest difference is the, the level of detail perhaps in that as ReachUp has a structured curriculum um, and it, the reason we, it has a structured curriculum is that was it's very helpful and supportive for the person's delivering. So it's not that we expect them to to um, rigidly stick to it, but it provides them with examples of activities and so they kind of know things that they can do. And then when where they're working with the family, then they can adjust those to the interests and ability of the child and the interests of the parents. So I think that maybe is is the is the biggest difference between the two. Um, but uh, as you know. They're, they're, the, the, as Aisha says, some of, the, some of the activities within Care for Child Development go back to um, earlier days at, at UNICEF. 
um, you know, when they were looking at the information from the Jamaica intervention. Thank you. And something we have been doing is trying to cluster a little bit uh, some of the questions. I don't know if, uh, Shekufe, we can start with, uh, we, we have something about uh, COVID adaptations. Uh, if you want to share a bit of uh, the questions and sure. see, then we see who can answer. Yeah, we had a lot of questions. So one um, important question around the COVID adaptation was, um, can you share a bit more on the systems of support, safety and capacity building um, for the facilitators in the COVID context, so those who are delivering the program? And how are you connecting with community structures and other systems to support uh, the work? So how do we do that? Any, any thoughts from the CCD and the reach up groups about how you're addressing this? Support for facilitators, frontline facilitators. So I can I can start if you like, and others can hopefully add. Um, we uh, uh, the in Jordan there was um, a a lockdown for the last I think three months or more. Um, so the only way we could reach our frontline workers was through the phone and through web-based menus, uh, modalities like WebEx and Zoom. Um, so we did um, a lot of IT support to be able to get um, 85 frontline um, reach up and learn facilitators um, on on WebEx and able to use it. So, um, so that's been both for training, but also for um, regular meetings um, and peer support um, where they can uh, frontline workers share challenges and successes and what's motivating to them. Um, and IAT and um, the, the health team um, help them troubleshoot um, and also address um, and, and um, promote uh, Home is for well being strategies or facilitate your well being strategies. Thanks, Caitlin. That's helpful. Thank you, Kate. I don't know if someone else has another response. Either on the training side, how, how do you train the frontline workers uh, to, the, to deliver the, the interventions, but also how, how do you create this community and, and this support, uh, ongoing support, like Caitlin was saying? Uh, like in Syria, uh, like uh, like the training, we are trying to use uh, like some of the um, like, uh, public uh, so, uh, social media um, platforms like WhatsApp or, or Facebook. Uh, so like what we uh, what we have done is we designed the course in a way that is uh, interactive. They can like uh, do comments and have questions. So we make sure that they have. Uh, um, like a comprehension of the uh, of the uh, training contents, but uh, like as of implementation, uh, since we, we are unable now to to make like any any contact with uh, like home visits or gathering with children, so this is like we we, are, we stopped on on the uh, training side only. Thank you, Ahmed. Uh, Ano if we go to another. Uh, Swetha, Swetha sort of wants question. to. Do you have a brief comment? Yeah, just to say that um, in terms of training um, with the Aga Khan Foundation in India, and that wasn't part of this presentation, but what we've done actually is the normal kind of face-to-face -face trainings that we've had, we've actually cut them up into short chunks and modules that are easier and more digestible to, to do virtually. Um, the other thing that we've done is in rural areas where there's very little access to internet, we've actually provided credit, uh, like phone credit and, and that kind of um, support to help those families that are in rural areas. So I think it's still possible to do trainings for frontline workers. You just have to do it differently. And when you're, you know, having to do things virtually, think about like cutting up the content into sh very short chunks that are easier to do. So I just wanted to add. Sorry, I, I, I want to ask a, sorry, Shikuka, a, a follow up on that uh, to what uh, Susan was saying when we started, like all of these parenting programs are evidence based, but we don't have yet the evidence of the, these remote modalities. I, I'm, I'm curious if any organization is working on trying to generate that evidence of these models for remote training or remote uh, parenting sessions uh, with parents, just to know if, if someone is working on that. 
Anna? Uh, yeah, we, we are working on that, but uh, like the results, uh, maybe we can share that uh, like once we, we have like done like all the all the study and the assessment, we, we, we have done like the assessment for all the trainees and there will be a post assessment and then uh, we, we can see like on the ground what uh, like, like as a study, what is the difference between face to face and uh, the advantages, disadvantages of uh, online training. Thank you. I think Anna wants to say something. Thank you, Diego. Very quickly, just to echo something that Susan said at the beginning of the presentation, I think a lot of agencies and implementing partners are seeing this as an opportunity to better understand what kind of remote support we can provide to parents. So a lot of the work that we're doing across the world in the countries that were profiled today, but others like Serbia, is that we are collecting real-time data about how are we providing that remote support to parents. And we are working on systems within the ministries of health to actually be able to use that data not just to save this work or not but also do the tweaks that we need in real time because to be honest i don't think that anyone has figured this out so it's really trying to use data for decision making and for improvement of the interventions then the other comment that i wanted to quickly make about how are we supporting the different frontline workers that are delivering these interventions is that as our colleagues in UNICEF have mentioned, um, we see the CCD package, for example, as something that gets embedded into other things that the Ministry of Health or Education or Social Protection are doing. So as part of our wider involvement with the government, there is a lot of support, for example, in PPE, a lot of countries actually, in some countries, the home visiting program ended, it was not supported. It was not uh, possible to do it face to face, but in others, uh, still the community health workers were going to the to the homes and the community. So we had to work with our health colleagues and the Minister of Health to be able to provide that. And the same in terms of um, emotional well-being and mental health support. We're worrying about not just the emotional well-being of the caregivers, but also of the frontline workers. So it's also caring for the one that provides the support to families. Thank you. Thank you. We have Dr. Hamadani, which, who we didn't introduce, but she's part of um, the Reach Up and Learn team who developed the program, and I see she has her hand raised as well. Hi, sorry I was late. I was stuck in another meeting. Hello, everybody. It's so good to see you all. Uh, just I wanted to uh, compliment about the, what others uh, said about the COVID situation. What we are doing in Bangladesh is we are developing some uh, standard operating uh, procedures to keep our staff as well as the community people safe. So we want to have something standard and uh, uh, use it. And we are also trying to make some audio messages and video uh, clips to share with the community and with the trainers. Thank you. I think also Adriana uh, from UNICEF wanted to share something. Yes, thank you. Very quickly, I just wanted to mention that we are um, for, in, for, for the question about remote, remote trainings. We are developing a, in, from UNICEF LACRO a CCD online course. So um, the idea will be to reach to, to, for service providers and frontline workers to take these courses in Spanish. It's very simple. The initial idea was to reduce the, the number of, um, of uh, physical trainings that we had at first, but now with the COVID-19 crisis, it makes all the sense in the, in the world to, to go forward with this. And we're also piloting in Peru a solution called Affinidata that works with um, through artificial intelligence uh, via Facebook Messenger for the moment and reach through the service provider uh, to the families. So in Peru, for instance, we're gonna work with nurses from the Healthy Child Visits. We're going through, we're going to reach 1, 000, 1, 115 nurses that will reach 12,000 families uh, with CCD messaging and with specific support and messages uh, for parents, also referring them to existing services uh, and, and, and things like that. So. Thank you, Adriana. And, and just to acknowledge that, that we're over time, we, we said in the chat box that if, if it was okay to extend for 10 more minutes, so we hope that's okay. 
Uh, and thank you our panelists for staying for uh, 10 more minutes. So we can take uh, at least uh, a few more questions. Nosha Kufa, you want to go to the next question? Sure. Um, uh, I want to, I'll come back to that, but there was a whole cluster of questions around responsive caregiving and um, questions about parent support. Um, so I'm just going to cluster them together. And the, the main question was, how are you deciding um, what messages are critical? How do you sequence them? And how do you ensure ongoing engagement by parents after you've delivered those messages to them? And there was also a question about how are you doing this with illiterate parents as well? Um, so if you can share some of that, um, you know, especially in the context of COVID where parents are more burdened. Uh, so just a technical question about the caregiver support. Uh, and, and I encourage panelists to quickly unmute yourself, give us a quick snappy answer and mute yourself again so we can get through it as fast as possible. So go for it. Well, just to say something about um, illiterate parents. I mean, certainly off, one of the techniques that's being used in Guatemala and Mexico is a lot of it is a, they're, they're designing radio dramas. So while there's pictorial things that are handed, handed out with some limited words for, for parents, then they're also supporting them with, with radio. They've developed these radio skits, which are kind of a neighbor chatting to the par neighbor and the parent chatting to kind of reinforce the messages. So I think that's one way. Yeah, similarly, in many of our country contacts, and Mohammed and Firial didn't have a chance to show you our video, but the link um, to all of our parent tip videos are actually in the chat box. But we're doing like really short kind of video sessions. That's one thing that actually show um, what it is, how to play different games. Um, these, we're not only just doing it by like video and, and you know, those with internet access, but we're also sending it by WhatsApp. We're also using um, radio. And in some contexts, you'd be surprised in rural areas, they also um, use TV more. So we're also doing these on TV. Yeah, I can jump in also um, our Ahlan Sim Sim project, um, which is a partnership between the IRC and Sesame Workshop. Um, we have, um, Sesame has created a, a localized version of Sesame Street in Arabic that's broadcast across the region um, and um, covers social and emotional um, themes and um, such as having songs on different emotions um, and also different coping strategies for coping with big feelings. So um, this is just one example of a lot of resources that, that this partnership has um, created that, um, that are in use mass media, which reaches a lot of homes and um, is now sent over WhatsApp for more direct um, reach and, um, and works really well with um, low to little resources and literacy. Thank you. Thank you. Garen wanted to say something. Yeah. Let's yeah. let, oh, sorry, let's give a chance to UNICEF. Garen, go ahead. Uh, well, one issue, as I mentioned about the, the seeker response, is that we constructed what is essential component framework. And one of the issues about messaging we found with, with families, with, with children with disabilities, it's very important to look across the life course and seeing what is needed at the different critical moments. For example, at the time of birth, what is that first message? And Karen mentioned about the first message by the medical profession to the family when a child is identified is critical. In most cases, it's a nightmare of a situation. So messaging really has to also look, especially with children with disability families, is that at each stage, each moment, there's some critical messages that respond to the situation. And, and, and so I think it's very important that there's not just one message for everything, but as we try to construct with the Zika response, there's critical messages at different moments of the life course and what parents need at that moment. Thanks, Karen. That's very that's very helpful. Um, Dr. Hamadani, do you have your hand up, or is that do you want to speak? I I just wanted to add that we haven't been to the field yet since it has started, but we are making preparations to have plans for um, covering the COVID-19 included in our uh, curriculum, as well as we are asking. We are now um, contacting the parents over telephone to see if they have access to internet and if they can 
see video messages on their mobile phones, like if they have a smartphone and they can use that. So we could uh, put that into practice also. Thank you. Thank you, Jen. And, and, and I could see how that will help to, to secure the engagement of, of parents, which I, I wanted to ask uh, one more person from our panelists that question of how do you secure the ongoing engagement of parents so that it, does, it doesn't stop when, with one uh, message or one activity and that they actually engage throughout the, the program, particularly in these uh, stressful times with COVID-19. Using the social network too, like Facebook Live and fan routines because they don't ask something that is uh, so different, they just want to, to have answers and caregivers then a specific question, for example, in Facebook Live, as well as Zoom session from, for, for parents' networks too. That's really great. And Diego, I wanna draw our attention. Some um, uh, participants have been also sharing adaptations that they're doing, like sending voice messages on for illiterate parents and speaking books as well. So please do share your adaptations. Um, does, uh, that's really great. Josie, there's a question for you. How does speaking books work? So maybe you can respond to that in the chat so we can all learn and share with us in the survey as well. Um, over to you, Diego, to, Aswata, uh, sorry, you had your hand up. Please come in briefly. Yeah, I just wanted to quickly respond to Diego's question around encouragement and motivation. One of the things that we found in implementing CCD in many different countries is that this is not something where either the home visitor or the health worker or the caregiver should go to see a family member and tell them. And it also then, um, when you do that, if a parent is already skilled in a particular area, you need to be able to adjust quickly um, at, you know, to, to make it really useful for them. So what we found is start from where they are like each you know, person needs to understand that parents and caregivers already have a lot of resources and a lot of assets and they know a lot. And so what you're doing is encouraging them and building up what they already know. And also it's important to develop and implement with them. So we found that when we engage um, parents and caregivers from the very beginning, even as peer-to-peer -peer, um, leaders with us, that that actually makes it more exciting for them and they take on ownership. And then it's their job to engage their uh, peers and, and their uh, community members. And we found that to be really, really useful. And around the messaging, Shikufe, you also said, how do you kind of decide what messaging? So there's so many messages around child development that are important. But I think it is very important that in each country context or even each local context, think about what are the main issues that are challenging children you know, in your context. So for instance, in a rural part of uh, Tajikistan, when I went there, we found that actually one of the main things was, was, around, um, was around like violence. Um, so we thought actually then the, there's so many messages, but maybe actually that the, the critical messages that we needed to focus on were around um, violence and, and trying to kind of um, deal with those. So I think it is important in each context to think about that. Thanks. Thank you. Um, and uh, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll have to stop now because we're already 12 minutes over time. And I really appreciate that uh, more than 250 people stayed with us, even though we are over time, but also we want to respect the, everyone's uh, time. So thank you very much for joining. I think it, it is clear that there is interest uh, for this. There is passion to, to learn from each other and from our experiences. And we will think about this and Thank you also, everyone has been sharing some of your examples, even if you are not part of the panelists, there is so much going on in the chat box. So we'll try to see how we can consolidate and share that uh, with everyone. I, what I leave with me is that it's all about the, let's make sure that whatever we do is evidence-based and that's what we are doing. That's what all our panelists are doing. And how do we create more evidence so that when we have a similar situation, we are ready to respond with uh, even more uh, evidence-based solutions that is not just the, the core component and the traditional parenting models, but something that is adaptable. And also very curious to see what happens in, in a few months when we're past this situation, how much of these adaptations and innovations will, will stay and will make the programs better. So I think this will be a really good opportunity for parenting interventions.
Yeah, and Diego, I just want to say thank you so much for moderating. You were fantastic. Thank you to all the panelists, especially thank you to the UNICEF and the Aga Khan Foundation teams for co-organizing. And just to say, you know, we're piloting a technical online help chat that, you know, we can have more engagement beyond the webinars and an ongoing basis in the online community on the ICTAN platform. So watch out for that. I'm also, again, going to post a link to a survey. So many have been sharing adaptations you're doing. So please, like, go send us that information there so we can start having more, um, you know, show and tells of what people are doing and we can learn better. So again, thank you so much, UNICEF, AKF, Dr. Walker, Dr. Yusuf Zai, the IRC team um, for joining us. And again, thank, a big thank you to the LEGO Foundation to help us make this happen. So thanks everyone. Have a big a thank you for, to Shekufe for moving this forward. Yeah, thanks everyone. And thank you to the XDAN team as well. Gracias. Bye. 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 Ciao, ciao. I just love all the thank yous that are coming in at the end and the great uh, feedback for everyone. So I hope all the panelists are taking that in. I'm gonna stop this recording.